Welcome back everybody. In the last video we went through the fuel system on this 1980 Volkswagen Rabbit. Uh, we MacGyvered in a fuel pump, tested spark, uh, ended up replacing the starter, and figured out how to get the car to turn over with a missing ignition switch just by putting all the wires together. In that video we found out that the fuel injectors were clogged, so in this one we're going to take them out using a custom tool and clean them and hopefully get this car running. And you drill two holes or cut two slots however you want to do it for a screwdriver to fit on there and then you can use it to kind of pry them out. So you slip it behind, and you did it like that. These are already loose, so I won't be able to show you super well. You slip behind like that, and then this piece of board goes in to protect your, protect your valve cover. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Do a rough example. And we got the two screwdrivers. And these guys, one in that hole, one in that hole, and you can pry it out, and it'll pop it out just like that. It's gonna be a lot harder than that if it's an older car. This one uh, took both of us prying out pretty good, but they pop right out. And we'll show you what the injector looks like real quick. Here's the injector once we pulled out. You can see it's filthy, and the tip of it, after we've dragged it up in dirt, uh, looks pretty gnarly. Okay, so we pop them apart with a 14 and a 12. Yeah. So it's you can see the old varnish from the gas on this side. This one doesn't look too bad. We soak them in some carb cleaner real quick. Just try to get all the gunk broken up inside of them. Let's see all the crap falling out. Uh, kind of let that eat up the, the varnish and, and take, it, take it away. And then we, we hit him with some pressurized air and it seems to clean him out pretty good. So we sprayed him with carb cleaner after we're wiping in the outsides and look at all that junk coming out. So that's just all varnish that built up inside of him mostly. Um, so we're going to let that soak a little bit, kind of slosh around the outside. And then um, we'll spray him out. And then we got to somehow get these O-rings off. Um, because they're all totally dried out and crunchy. Luckily, um, you can actually buy new ones from, I think, AutoZone or something. I'll have to figure out where we got these from and show you guys the link. But got some new ones. They're still pretty hard, but definitely going to be fresher than what's on there. So the solution with these crappy old O-rings is to kind of cut them off. And they crack because they're so old. Just like that. That's, this is why we're we're replacing them. So these new O-rings are pretty flexible. Let me see. Um, it's still really hard to get over. So what we're doing is we're taking some just regular grease and we're lubing up the the shaft of the injector. Just to make them easy to slide on. You always want to lube up O-rings and stuff like this. And a little bit of grease on that. Now what we found works best if you set that one down, you push the injector onto it. And then you can slide it down. And it's a little gap. Just like that. Nice and hopefully ready to reinstall. Now that we have all these things cleaned up, we reinstalled them real quick. Just to put them on, just like loosely snug them up. And I got this thing squirting into there. And we're just going to do a quick test run. Um, right now, the fuel pump, like you saw, I just like in the last video, it's just wired up roughly um, and hanging down. And we just have this little guy right here. We can click and it'll trigger. So we pressurize the fuel system there first, let it charge up, and then you can reach inside here and, and play with that um, big cantilever thing, the big cantilever like air system. Uh, when you press it up, like simulating air flowing through, it'll allow fuel to flow out of this little distributor unit and two all the injectors and we should see them all squared out and we're just going to kind of check and see make sure they all look pretty similar uh, for flow wise. Here we go. In order to reinstall these, um, it takes a little more force than just you can do with your hand I think. So we're just using the same exact tool 
um, and just working the other way. So we're we're bracing this piece of this piece of wood off the the top of the intake manifold up there, and we see the screwdrivers in, and we just uh, wedge it and pops right in. Update. So injectors are all back in up on the top here. Just use a piece of wood to wedge them back on, and uh, we started messing around trying to crank it over. Like you saw earlier, we we were we did test it, and we got fuel out of all the injectors. But now the car is acting like there's no fuel, doesn't want to fire. Um, so I'm going to go over what we did to, to diagnose that real quick. The, the first thing that we messed with was obviously the distributor here to see if we could make it fire. We thought maybe the timing was off. And right now it's readjusted to where it should be. But when we first grabbed it, I just loosened up and cranked it over and kind of play with it to see if any of that would, would help it fire up. And we actually could kind of see that the, the starter was having problems. It would kick back and not want to fire. It almost seemed like the, the battery wasn't high enough voltage because it would, it would crank and then stop and whir, whir, and then crank again. And then we realized that we must be super far off in the timing where it's, where it's firing against itself. So we went and read up a little bit and figured out uh, how, they, how they time these cars, actually. If you look down in here, I'll show you clear enough. There we go. You want the other big one? So right here, this is on the flywheel. And you can see it actually has a built-in mechanism, a little arrow that points. And you can see, hopefully, the zero there in the line. The zero is top dead center, and the line is three degrees after top dead center. So that's where you're supposed to time these cars. Um, no timing light required. There's nothing There's nothing on like the, the belts like you might see on like a, a Chevy or anything. It's all done right there. So if we pop this oops, distributor cap off, you can see as well, as you can see right there, this line... On the, oops, on the distributor actually marks top dead center. So you can see here this thing when we when we're lined up. Yeah, it's like three, three. It's kind of in the point that we're in between. We're just a little bit off of that mark. You kind of see we're just, we're just like a, a hair after it. It's even it's really hard to tell. But the point is is that you get this thing all lined up and then you take the distributor cap and it only sits on here one way. And it'll kind of pop into place. There we go. It's popped in. So now you got to line up so you know where that the guy was pointing kind of like this way. There's number one. Follow number one back. Number one is this guy on the on the on the side closest to the timing belt. So you so you line the rotor the rotor in there up with number one, and then it's all timed up. So we had all that problem with the kind of backfiring, not one to crank well. Went and actually looked it up, did the timing, lined it up with this mark down in there. Um down in this little tiny hole, lined it up with the mark on the distributor, lined it up with number one up here, and now it fires up really well, so I'll show you that. Another interesting thing I learned while we were doing this is I originally had it pulling out of a little gas tank right here, um, and I was only pulling out of it, I wasn't returning into it, and I neglected to think about the fact that on this car it has a full return system. So I kept blowing through gallons of gas. I had two gallons in it, ran out, put two more in that little tank, and it ran out. And I finally realized that there's a whole bunch of complex return system. There's dozens of lines. And somewhere in here is the regulator. I believe this is the regulator, um, as far as I know. And so that was actually sending the fuel right back into the tank. So I just went ahead and did it up nicely down here. And now this thing's kind of just wrapped up in here. I, t I set it up so that there's this little loop here, and it runs back into a filter. Because uh, I know the tank's kind of dirty, but not super bad. Um, but it pulls through that first and then pumps it up. And so now it's just actually running off the tank of the car. So got our sketchy wiring. You hit the fuel system for me. Let it pressurize and we'll crank. Starts right up. Oh. Listen to that. It's pretty good. There we go. All fixed and running finally. Okay. So that's really exciting. The car is working again, um, running at least. Uh, I jacked it up and tried to put it in drive and reverse, and they both spin in the automatic, which is a good sign. But I can't stop them, so that means the brakes work, don't work, which I already kind of near the brake pedal goes to the floor, the fluid is empty. Um, so I guess it's the next adventure is to try to bleed those or see what's going on, and maybe we're facing for a quick test drive. So, uh, nothing's ever easy on this car, um, and the brake line's broken. So, I think this is where I'm going to end the video for this. Uh, I've got the car running, got it timed, 
Uh, got the fuel system just kind of plumbed back together. Got another return lines working, and it fires up, running the whole system, even with some old dirty gas. I got a nice, I got a filter in front of it, so it shouldn't hurt anything. Um, but yeah, the brake line is totally popped. Um, it's a huge mess. Um, You can't see it. This is broken right there. You see a little bubble sticking out. Um, so, this car is finished for now. I'm going to order that piece. It's just like 17 bucks from AutoZone. They have a bunch of weird questions for it. I'm going to break for it now. Um, they want to know if it's America, if the car is built in America or Germany, if it's right hand or left hand thread. So, I just quickly checked. It is the right hand thread one, just normal thread. And uh, the guy told me that you can kind of see where your car is built right here. Uh, manufactured by Volkswagen of America. So this car was built in America. So um, for some reason, it's a whole different part depending on where it was built. But uh, yep, I'm going to end the video here. So I'll uh, see you next time, you guys, and we'll hopefully get the brakes fixed. Maybe plug a few of the water leaks underneath the car and then take this thing for a spin. Thanks for watching.